Hi, and welcome to Design. Today we're here with artist Benjamin Short. I want to thank Benjamin for having this interview with us at Design, and also with the American Institute of Architects, San Joaquin. Uh, I also want to thank Darden Architects for hosting our interview. Uh, let's see, so for those who aren't too familiar with you, Benjamin, uh, I'd like to give an introduction of who you are, what you do, and what your goals are with your artwork. So. A uh, quote you once said was, uh, banality is my worst enemy. I need a world beyond the day-to-day -day grind to look for laughter, excitement, or something extraordinary and like to share that world with others. So can you tell us a little more about the world you try to create? Um, well, it's, the world is built on work and labor and things like that, but I like to dream and I think that that's important. That's the world that I think we need to put forward we've got a lot of negative things going on in, in the world today and you have to be able to dream past them otherwise without hope there's you know oh, how do I say that without hope there's there's just darkness and I think the world that I hope to create is something full of light full of hope full of laughter um, that sort of thing things that make people go beyond themselves their everyday struggles. That's great. That's great. So let's take a look at your, at your uh, past projects maybe and uh, maybe start to talk a little bit about them. So can you tell us what this first project was and uh, sort of how it came to be and what materials you used on it? Sure, absolutely. Um, first off, I'd like to approach the, the fashion sense that I had back then. <laughs> was, I was going through a stage. And I'm past that now. Um, this is a sculpture I created um, with the steampunk genre in mind, um, I was working for a company here in Fresno, um, a theming company, and this was a, a pet project of mine. I wanted to see what I could do. Just, you know, I, I was just learning materials at the time, um, things that they use, foam. This is uh, uh, ESB foam uh, coated in a hard plastic, and then um, with additions on top of that, uh, found objects, things like that. and. Um, I just wanted, to, I thought the idea of a wonky robot on, a, on one wheel, like a unicycle, would be hilarious, you know, it would be fun to see. Um, I, I imagine this in bronze someday in a fountain somewhere, you know, something fun like that. Um, but uh, yeah, that was the that was that piece. Um, and so was this for a specific client at all, or was this just no, something no, this you did on just, your own? This is just to, uh, to make a statement in Fresno, to say, hey, here I am, look what I can do. Um, I wanted to be larger than life. Everybody sculpts within one to two feet, and it's hard to get somebody's attention sometimes. So I decided I was going to really go for it with this piece. <laughs> um, originally, there was going to be a mechanical work in the middle of a squirrel on a bicycle, like he was powering the thing. <laughs> so I thought that would be kind of fun too. Um, yeah. So this piece, this one's probably one of my favorites. Um, that I have been going to LA for classes, sculpture classes, and a lot of what. A lot of the film industry artists teach classes on the side to, to make a living, to make ends meet. And I took a class with um, Don Lanning, and he's he's worked on movies like Hellboy and Scooby Doo and various films like that uh, throughout the years. But this piece, um, I was exploring. Actually, a lot of the work that I do is exploration of materials these days. Um, this piece was an exploration of latex found object and uh, a technique they call hair punching and they use it for special effects in the, in the industry and I wanted to see how alive I could make something and so that's what I was doing there is pursuing that piece. How do you get, how'd you get the wet thing. look? I'm sorry, how do you get the wet look there on the nose? Um, that is actually um, a two-part epoxy thinned with acetone to make snot or sweat or um, wet eyes. The eyes are also wet. Um, that's that's a, again a film industry technique that they use. Um, so yeah, there's that, that piece. What was your found object? Do you actually know what it was? Um, all the background. Um, this is uh, there's a plastic board on the back and then all of this, this is a, a uh, tongue depressor or a popsicle stick that is from a, um, uh, a fan for, from some object. I can't remember what object it was. And then we have circuit boards and different things like that. That's a door handle piece on the corner up there and what have you so it's a variety of things so do you always tend to sort of try to uh, merge two ideas 
into one. Like I, this one, I could see sort of the mechanical mix with sort of like an organic figure. That does happen a lot. It's I'm, I really haven't paid attention to it, but it yeah. does seem to happen a lot more than you know I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a great one. I so. very much like the idea of life and technology coming together. I think that's a really fun idea. So um, that's the direction we're going anyway, so might as well do something interesting with it. This is a bronze piece that I did um, at Fresno State. I took a uh, workshop, I guess you'd call it, and this is the piece I produced. Again, a steampunk. This is a character, um, Xavier Avante. Um, he's a he's a airship captain. I usually start with a story. In any piece of art that I do, I have to have a story foundation, a, a personality to, to build off of. And he was, I was exploring steampunk during the, that time, and that idea just popped into my head one day. And I thought, you know what, let's do something with this. this is, he was originally going to be a lamp, um, but I didn't get that far. I haven't really explored electrical work. <laughs> I'm more of an artist than I am a technician, so, um, but that was one of my pieces. You said this one was cast in bronze? It is in bronze. Yes. Did they have a, um, a way to melt the bronze there at Fresno State? Yeah, they have a foundry, a full foundry. Um, not for large pieces like the first piece you saw. We wouldn't necessarily be able to do that there, but anything smaller than that is, is possible. Awesome. Yeah, so this one had a backstory as a pilot. The other, the previous one, had a story as well then. I mean, you just wanted something to look alive. Exactly. Uh, just an alien creature kind of concept, <laughs> yeah. you know, something that could be thrown into any movie. You know, very passionate about films. It's our, it's our literature of the day. It's the literature of our age, and it's how we convey ideas. And sometimes they're good ideas, sometimes they're bad ideas, sometimes they're neutral ideas. And um, I lean towards the positive. So you mentioned Fresno State, um, and then sort of some techniques in LA. Uh, so where did you grow up, and how did your early childhood maybe affect sort of the work you do today? I mean, were there any experiences or people you ran into growing up that really influenced the way you do work? Um, yeah, absolutely. My father was very much a nature guy. He was a he would have been a woodsman back in the day, you know, if he could have. We spent a lot of time up in the forest, so I very much fell in love with nature in that sense. And my, gr my grandmother um, was very religious, very strong in her religious beliefs. So that gave me the spiritual side of my art. Um, and I had free reign. I lived on Herndon and Blackstone uh, back when there were fig orchards and fields and farms and whatnot kind of in that area. Not tons, but a few. Um, so I had a lot of free time to run and explore my imagination and what have you. So that was a it had a huge impact. That's great. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the techniques. Um, what is sort of the most prevalent technique you're using these days as far as creating your art? And um, I guess, uh, what scales are you using right now? Like, are you doing more small scale projects or large scale projects? Um, currently, I am doing excuse me, um, small scale projects. You know, um, it's really hard to store monstrosities like the first one, uh, first piece. Um, so I'm working small and refining my ability, my technique and what have you. Um, I'm doing a lot of casting in plastics and um, rubbers and things like that. Masks, um, figurines, uh, they call them maquettes, maquettes in the film industry. Um, and that sort of thing. I really am going to be working on a larger project coming up uh, for Bullard High School um, here in Fresno. Um, it is their mascot. It's a knight charging on a, on a stallion, um, the lance and shield, and that's going to be 10 foot by 20 foot long, 10 foot high by 20 foot long. And um, after that, I'm going to be doing some large scale sculptures um, just to get back into it. I, I really love working big. I like the idea of somebody maybe walking around the corner and seeing a face size of a bus on the side of a building. That's very exciting to me, that size of work. Do you have a studio here in Fresno? I work out of my garage. I'm transforming it into my studio. I used to have a studio at um, um, Broadway Studios um, that's uh, run by Reza Semi. And I decided that I need to work at home. I need to have things familiar around me. And that really helps to, to percolate some really fun ideas. 
I get a lot of inspiration that way. Awesome. So you've also said, I strive to tell a little story about the human experiences with each piece I make and attempt to ignite the imagination of onlookers with what is possible if they dare to dream just a bit. So we've talked a little bit about the style of creating art and what inspires that. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what inspires the content. I know you'd said stories, um, but sort of what else inspires the, the actual content that's inside of the work? Um, is it uh, you reading books and coming up with these stories or just life experiences and then seeing something out there and then needing to create art from that experience? I am, I'm inspired by anything and everything nature, human action, um, people around me that I, that I love and care about, things that they do and say. Um, I really like the idea of, I don't know, making, making reality playful a little bit. Um, I keep going, coming back to that idea. Human nature, natural things, natural forms, um, not really a architect as much as I am an artist in the organic sense. Um, there are some artists that are very architectural in their work. Um, for me, it, it, it has to have some element of living and breathing to it. That's inspiring. So do you have sort of an idea of what you're going to make beforehand or is it sort of like as you begin to create it sort of turns into something? There are, um, you name it. These things, these, <laughs> yeah, all these things have happened. I've woken up in the middle of the night, made a note, and went to, to the workbench with one little idea. It has to be shaped like, like a pear. And then I go from there, and it becomes a, a character. Um, it becomes a creature, and it becomes uh, the story evolves. Sometimes I see something that I want to say. And um, I'm currently working on a story about um, a character who's a little too helpful and he becomes a, a menace to his community but then they find out they need him and that's kind of like me and other artists I feel like we're kind of those kinds of people we might be annoying at times but eventually you're, I find that society will need us for one reason or another so no it's very interesting I think the value of having imagination is sort of overlooked I think uh, the ability to be technical and to work out a problem, I guess, like technically, is sort of uh, valued now. I mean, especially you think of like app developers or something like that, whatever it is, like the very, but I think the people who are able to imagine and actually dream up projects are sort of the most undervalued and the most um, needed to be valued people, I think. I think that's the most necessary for a culture, I think. What do you mean? I would agree um, in that we, we need to be able to solve problems. We can't always go to somebody else because eventually, Everybody's going to be looking at each other and nobody's going to know anything or nobody's going to have that way of thinking, that creative, living way of thinking. Um, or they're all going to be like a NASA hanging out or something like that, you know. Um, we need to, to live creatively, think creatively, and work those muscles on an individual level as well as a social level. Because otherwise we're going to become victims of our own technology. You know, the only, the people who know how to use it have, have power, have the control, have the ability to, to solve problems. And we're all going to be walking around going, uh, what do we do now? Yeah, you know, yeah so. exactly. The people with the vision are necessary. I think that's, that's awesome. So, I mean, that sort of segues into another question then of what do you think the state of art is in the San Joaquin Valley? I think it's growing. This is a, com a question that I'm, I've been mulling around in my head for a long time. When I was younger, there was no art scene. It was... What could you do on your t-shirt you know for school you know or you know what could you do on the side of a building when nobody was looking um but now in fresno and throughout the valley i think um, we're growing it's burgeoning it's it's coming to life we have artists working with technicians artists working with architects in my experience in my current situation um but there's still room to grow i feel like we're almost there the artists have almost come back <laughs> from, you know, almost ex from near extinction. Um, I feel like people are appreciating it more. People are driven to create studios. The downtown area, when I was <laughs> when I was a kid, it was dangerous. You didn't want to go down there. There was nothing but, but danger. Now you go down there and there's um, lofts 
and galleries and studios. Um, like I said, Reza has created several such studios where artists can come together and becomes a think tank for art, you know, in the creative process. Um, it's inspi inspiration in a, in a pot, basically. And, um, but there's still some growth for us as artists. We need to, to be sought more. So to, I, to make a living, to, to become a, an entity in, the, in our culture, again, we really need to be sought on a broader level. Would you say that's sort of the main obstacle facing artists right now, is um, that people aren't seeking artists? I think so. I think so. They're not. The, the need for art hasn't been won back, hasn't been seen um, socially. Um, that's important. That um, can be accomplished by uh, through education. Put the arts back in school. Put the arts, you know, in the foreground, not some commercial on the side, but maybe create a television show where people realize, they learn about their community, they learn about downtown, they see what's going on, and they think, "Wow, I could really, you know, I would like to grow from this. I would, that would be, you know, an amazing thing." What do we need to do then to progress art in the San Joaquin Valley? Um, again, put the arts back in school, broaden. What, what's available. I mean, just from my experience going to LA um, and getting involved in the entertainment industry, artists, um, the, the, the things that are possible for artists um, are, are, it's amazing. The, the levels of, of jobs that can be found. Um, we need to educate our educators on what's possible. They need to think beyond um, the paper mache or the, you know, Small craft projects, small or craft project, yeah. projects, and things like that. I mean, if I had a team of artists with me, we could build amazing things. You know, but trying to find people who are educated in the same direction that I I follow is hard to do, um, and stay employed and stay fed and housed and things like that. You know, um, but if if we could open our eyes to all the possibilities of art, it would fill our society. It would fill you know. Neighborhoods, we could do amazing things. Right now, we kind of live in boxes. Let's decorate those boxes. Let's make them inspiring. Let's say something about what's inside the box. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's sort of like what Steve Jobs said about people don't know what they want until they know what they can have. Exactly. Sort of thing. It's like no, I, I had that that eye opening. I had that epiphany, and now I want it all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to do everything. I realize my limitations, but you know, again, if you let people know what's available. Then they start thinking, it starts clicking, and I think that would be a good way to go. It's awesome. So then, I have a quote, uh, every child is an artist, the problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. This is from Pablo Picasso. Uh, what does that mean to you? I've been a child forever. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you can tell by my manner, I'm, I, I like to play, I'm, you know, like to explore, be adventurous. Those are the things that I think we need to keep as artists, as, as people in general, is to Keep an open mind, be adventurous, explore. Those, that's what we lose. We, we get pigeonholed. You know, the world doesn't, decides it doesn't need bronzes anymore or 20 by 20 paintings or what have you. Um, we need to explore, right? Ex find a reason. Do it with, for no reason. As a kid, I did stuff for no reason at all, just to see what it would be like. That's what we need to do, is explore and, and be open-minded. Um, Perfect. I think along the same lines, I say the same thing. I think it's like when you're a child, you experience everything for the first time, and sort of that curiosity and that sort of awe and wonderment, is, that's amazing. I think there's a part of our culture that gets bored easily. They just feed on imagery, they feed on sound, and what have you. And if you really thought about the, the, that imagery and that sound, that would lead you somewhere, as opposed as opposed to now. It seems like our culture is being washed in media and things like that, as opposed to actually consuming it and digesting it and thinking about it. That's I think important. Yeah, that's great. So Benjamin, thank you. What's the best way for people listening to reach you? I mean, uh, uh, social media. So, uh, two social media outlets that I use are uh, Facebook, Ben Short, um, on Facebook or um, Instagram. You can also find me on Instagram. Um, if you want to reach me in person, um, you can call me at 559-367-2803. And if you're interested in creating an art project, that would be great.
Awesome. Looking forward to meeting you. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you.